Thanks for joining me on another bright morning walk here in Arizona. Beautiful days. This is our springtime, so uh, it's the calm before the storm. I'm not too sure how these walks will look in a month or so because uh, at that point we'll be, you know, into the into the hundred degree weather, and uh, I'll either have to bump it earlier and uh, and do that, or or I'll just be sweating as I'm as I'm talking to you, uh, most likely. So so um. We're in the thick of, of uh, some, uh, a series of videos that I, I would call uh, soft skills. Uh, let me get my camera positioned somewhere just right. Um, so uh, let, me, let me frame it for you. Maybe in the meanwhile, get your fingers moving. Everybody let me know uh, where you're from. Thanks, Eric. Best time of the week. Best time of the week. I, I tell you, these, these walks that I have, they are, they are a blast. Um, but uh, what, as, I've, as I've been doing these walks, I've gone through a variety of topics that are a little more conducive to just hanging out with you, um, meaning I'm not, I'm not going to be talking so much about uh, something like OSPF multi-area redistribution of you know, BGP routes, just because obviously as, as we're walking, I'd be like, uh, uh, I, let me, I, you know, I can't configure, I can't show. So a lot of these are a little more, uh, let's just, we'll just say culture, a little bit more, um, a little bit more, you know. Just let's let's just hang out. Let's have a cup of coffee. That that kind of feel, right? Uh, versus a lot of the tech grit. And one of the things that uh, that I've I've seen as I've been going through these, woo, my camera's all over the place. Um, is uh, uh, there's a there's a huge gap. Like, I think one of the topics I was talking about is you know how do you land a job? How do you get started? How do you progress and move up the ranks? And I, and I see this, this need where, where there's, there's obviously the technical skills, the know-how. Um, uh, the the know-how, do you know how to do this? Do you know how to do the job? Do you know how to set up a server, configure a router, install a switch, whatever the case is? Um, but there's a whole glut uh, of what I would call soft skills that, that I believe people struggle with. Um, and so that's, that's where, where the series is kind of gone is I'm like, let me just talk through a lot of things. So, so I, th I'm, I was just thinking as I was about to get started, uh, hello, Saudi Arabia, Greece. I love doing this in the morning because I get, I get so many folks from around the world uh, instead of just the United States, which is great, which is great because it, it goes right into what I'm about to say. As I talk about soft skills, um, I realize the reason people don't talk about soft skills that much, you know, is because the answer to everything is literally, it depends, right? When you're talking about setting up multi-area OSPF with BGP redistribution, there's only so many ways you can do that. You know, it's like, okay, you can do this, you can do that, well, that, you know, it's like, there, okay, three. And that's why technical skills are so easy to talk about is because it's like, that's, that's it. There's the answer, right? Versus soft skills being a little bit more like, wow, you know, someone from Greece, uh, you know, <laughs> someone who... Am I back? Am I back? There we go. Yeah. Thanks, Corey. Um, so, so um, yeah, that's, that's one of the drawbacks. I think and it, the, the irony is I think it's right there every time I, it, of, uh, of walking on, on cell signal doing live streams. So uh, thanks. Good to see you all again. So, so my, my point is, you know, it's great to have a lot of you here internationally because I know I'm crossing cultures. I know I'm crossing personalities and all of this stuff. Um, and uh, in The Office on TV, it's, it's a series that's just hilarious. Uh, I would say it's an over-exaggeration of probably a lot of real stuff. That's why it's, so many people connect with it, is it's, it's, it's very real topics, just over-exaggerated to make it funny. But everybody knows deep down inside, it's like, there's a lot of truth to the stuff that happens in The Office, right? Um, so, so my point in saying this, in, in this, this uh, uh, kind of intro to what, what we're going to be talking about, is... My perspective is my perspective. It's, it's framed uh, based on, on my worldview, based on my experiences and all that. And, and the beauty of, of uh, doing these live streams is I have you guys. Um, and I can see, I can see your, your thoughts, your, your comments as you're going through. I, I try to keep up with all of them. Uh, hello, Yemen. Um, but um, but uh, I would love to hear your perspective as well um, and, and the best best that I can. So let, let, let's dive right into it. Um, but please chat in 
if you have any thoughts, any perspectives, because you're right, the, the, what I'm about to tell you, I think are, are principles that can apply to many situations, but at the end of the day, when it comes to soft skills is, it depends. So, so the topic, when to laugh and when to be serious. Um, as I was jotting down some thoughts on, on well, how, what, what would I say for this? I thought, okay, I have some, I have some thoughts and I, I have some like, okay, in my experience, you gotta be, you gotta watch out for this. But again, first and foremost, I know that personalities are, are radically different. You know, people are, are different people. Some people are naturally more pleasant. Some people are naturally more, um, you know, driven, serious, like why are we wasting time talking about these kind of things? So, so again, that, that, keep, keep that in mind. But I will say as a rule of thumb, having a pleasant demeanor um, as, as, as an overall feel will draw people to you. Um, like some of you know, <laughs> some of you like, like even right now, I'm just like, I just, as I think about things, I smile, I laugh and, and I would, I would kind of put that into a pleasant demeanor. And if, if you're one of those folks that are looking into creating online training, um, you might watch a lot of the folks, uh, a lot of, you know, I've, I've done a lot of training for CBT nuggets. Um, and a lot of, you know, Keith Barker, um, he's another He's another guy. He and I have, have uh, walked together for about 20 years or so. We, we actually originally uh, taught together at a company called KnowledgeNet back in 1999. Um, and, uh, and if you listen to him teach, and if you listen to me teach, you'll, 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 you'll hear laughter at random times. Random times. It's just like, I, I'll, be, you know, I'll be walking, I'll have a thought, and I'll just smile and, and laugh at it, even though it's not necessarily funny. It's just like, you know, they're, they're, for whatever reason, as I think about it, it just makes me laugh. And it's, it's some of that, I, even in the comments that I, I've seen, uh, people typing in, uh, hey, PJ from Ireland. Um, so so uh, even in some of the, the comments that I've seen people typing in, uh, you know, people are like, man, your, your, your energy is so good. You're so enthusiastic. I saw somebody type, type in it. And, and, and it relates right to this topic. If you can go into your work environment and have that pleasant demeanor, it draws people to you. People are just naturally drawn to that versus not smiling, not laughing. I mean, take the, take the, the flip side of it. Most of the time people are like, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to talk. I don't, I don't feel good. You know, often talking whether or not you're a, you're a pleasant person or, or whatever the case is, it's just that, that smile, that laughter. So as a rule, have a pleasant demeanor, but, but, <laughs> ah, there's a car. Um, but know that, that there's times where seriousness has to come in. So, so first off, laughter should be, and I, I'm going to give you a principle your mom probably told you, but I see it so often. Laughter should always be with, not at. Um, when, you're, when you're having a car, and, and this is hard because it dives into sarcasm, it dives into um, uh, what I would what I would call cutting remarks, things like this, um, where when when you're so so when you're let's just say you're in a meeting, you know, a whole bunch of people, uh, you're you're um, doing a Zoom conference, whatever the case is, and you and you have you have this thought. I always I, I've gotten to the point where I have to check that thought, and I have to go with that. Is that is that? For lack of better words, does that lift somebody up? Is that just just funny, or is that funny at someone's expense? And it could be, it may not be just. I mean, obviously, when you're sitting, when you're sitting across the the, the conference table, and there's the guy over there, it, there's obviously making a, a a a joke at his expense, and everybody's like, okay, obviously you wouldn't do that. But but check yourself. Like, are you making jokes at others' expense that aren't in that room? Are you making jokes? and laughing at, hear the word, at, at customers that you have, at people at the customer site, at, you know, at, 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 like, like something happens to the humor when, when you're, when you're, when you're making it at somebody's expense, whether they're in the room or not, um, that becomes, it's, it's, it's almost like it starts taking, taking it down a road where you don't want to, you don't want to go and it changes people's perception of you. Meaning, 
<laughs> it's a approachable laughter. It's not like the Joker. <laughs> um, like it's it's it, it's uh, it, people people immediately get a perception of you. And again, we're talking about soft skills. We're framing it into how do people see you? Think of yourself in an interview. Somebody's asking you, "What was your last last job like?" Um, and you're and you're making jokes about the people that are there. It seems funny, you know. They may laugh with you, right? They, it, you know, but in their mind, something just got planted. Okay, this is the kind of person that blah, you know, like so. So put that in a bubble. So so um, laugh with, not at, and that's 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 an area that like all of these things we're talking about changing habits you know what i mean like some sometimes and i i came from a place where everything was a joke you know i i used to be the guy that would always have a joke for everything and that let, let me take that into the to the next level um when you do that in a meeting in a corporate setting in with coworkers know that telling a joke takes things back up to a more surface level Sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's not. Sometimes you're you're working on something that is serious, and I, I mean, there's plenty of folks. I used to be this person, where where you're working on something serious and it, it feels kind of uncomfortable, whether it be the the conversation, whether it be the you know the, the situation that handling, whatever the case is, and and sometimes in that discomfort, people are like. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be like, I don't want to be in this, this uncomfortable situation. So they'll start telling jokes to try and move it back. Like steer, like they don't think this way, but this is what they're doing. They're steering the conversation away from what really needs to happen to just make everybody laugh. And the sad thing, the sad thing is we talk about laughter. The sad thing is oftentimes it works. The title of this YouTube post is when to laugh and when to be serious. The challenge with laughter is yes, it does make everybody feel better. I, I started that way, you know, having, being a pleasant person is good. But oftentimes there's stuff that has to be dealt with. And if as you're walking, whether it be a circumstance, whether it be a personality conflict, whether it be, I mean, there, there's, there's, there's a whole variety of, you have to deal with it. And by moving it back to the surface through laughter, Everybody just kind of, oh, okay, and, and you move on. And people at the end of that meeting, let's just say, are like, uh, I don't think, did, did we accomplish what we were here for? And the answer is probably no, but everybody feels okay about it. And this is where at the end of the day, a lot of people start hating meetings because they're like, nothing gets done in meetings. Well, maybe a lot of times because either the person leading the meeting or the people in the meeting are using laughter to kind of just, you know, take what needs to get talked about back to the surface. I see an, uh, an, an, Anas uh, saying, live like Michael Scott. I don't know who Michael Scott is, but, uh, but maybe, maybe I do. I don't know names, I know faces. So, um, next, next thing. Um, when, you're, when you're talking to somebody, you know, often as you, as you grow in a, in a business, in relationships, or whatever the case is, um, learn to deliver feedback without laughter at least initially and this is just something this is something i've had to learn as i've moved from from uh, technical into more of managerial um oftentimes uh you'll have some feedback that you need to give to somebody and it's not going to be comfortable um it may be something like hey you were off on that um hey you know that configuration yesterday that should have been better planned you know you should have you know, notified, blah, blah, blah. But, but often, because it's uncomfortable to say that for you and for them, you'll come in and be like, <laughs> remember yesterday when you took the whole internet down for the office? That was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Everybody was like, yeah, I know. I, I, like, right now, I feel like the office, right? Because I'm, I'm over exaggerating to get the point. But I've seen this happen a lot of times. Where, I mean, I just made that up, but let's just say that, that um, somebody took the internet down because they didn't plan the outage correctly. They were adjusting an access control list, thought it would be a quick change, you know what I mean? And uh, thanks, Stephen, that's a great one. Meetings are 90% banter, 10% work. And, and a lot of that is because people haven't found that balance, striking that balance between when to laugh and when to be serious. Um, so... So when it, when, it, uh, when it comes to delivering feedback, be serious about it. And people will catch that tone. And, and I know initially it may be awkward for you, 
Um, it may be awkward to be like, hey, you took the internet down at the office yesterday, um, you know, because you adjusted an access list in the middle of production. Um, that cost, you know, an hour of employee productivity time. We had to send people home. That's a big deal, right? And, and the, the person receiving that feedback may do something like, oh, yeah, I know, but I know a lot of them are happy to go home anyway, you know, and, and an inexperienced person of when to be serious and when to, when to laugh would join right in there. Yeah, I know, people love going home and that's, you know, great. So, so just make sure, you see how it went back up to the surface? You see that in my make-believe situation I just came up with, right? Um, it, 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 like people will all, it's like, ah, this is uncomfortable. I need to bring it back to the surface. So deliver it and receive it with seriousness. Your, your nature is, might be to be defensive. It might be, you know, uh, but we see that you're right. You're right. I didn't do that. You know, get through that situation. This is how you change it from 90% banter to 10, you know, to 90% real. And then once, once you know, as a manager or as an engineer, that, 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 um, that feedback is received and processed. Uh, that's when you go, okay, you know, I'll make sure we don't do that again. But, you know, people do like to work from home. So, so you know, and that's where people, okay, chuckle, chuckle, chuckle. And you'll probably, if, if, you, if you see a manager who has a little experience, they'll recognize what just happened there and you'll even see them circle back around. They'll be like, okay, but yeah, it's true. But, but you know, we're, we're on the same page, right? That's not gonna happen again, true? Okay, good, good, okay, move on. So, so that's, that's that, that odd mix uh, between them. Now, I saw somebody type a question, uh, Fazad said, some people say we need to laugh and make some formal jokes. Maybe not during a job interview. What do you suggest? Um, that's a, oof. <laughs> it depends. Um, in a job interview. So, so um, I would say in a job interview, most of what people are looking after, and, and I had a whole... I thought I did a whole walk and talk on how to how to an ace an interview. Maybe I didn't. Maybe that's that should be an upcoming topic. Um, in that sense, you have to you have to get a feel for what are what are the people in the room like doing it doing a job interview. People want to know: Are you a culture fit? That's that's the number one thing that they're after. Do you fit our culture? And then can you can you do the job? If you find somebody that does the job, but they're not a culture fit, you're not going to get hired. Whereas if you find somebody who's a culture fit um, and you're like, I don't think they can do this, but I'm willing to give them a shot because man, this, this, this person is a great person. So, so keep, keep in mind, that's, that's, why I'm, that's why I'm saying and that's why I'm doing this whole series on soft skills is because it is, it is such, uh, you know, people don't talk about it, but it's such a missing element in landing and keeping a, a great job. So, so during the interview, I would suggest, again, as long as you're using appropriate humor, make a joke people you know it lightens up the room and and people feel more confident that you're confident and that you know this i think i think uh last week i talked about how to have confidence in in a lot of uh what we're talking about so so anyway um great great question um last last thing i've got and then i'll just scroll through some of your questions um hang on deliver receive feedback uh, since this, uh, yeah, okay, maybe, maybe I, I went through, okay, the last thing I'll reiterate if I, if I already mentioned this, is sense the seriousness of the situation. Um, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, a, let me, let me, let me tell you a, a story. Uh, I, I, I shouldn't even say the story. So, so let me, okay, let me, let me frame it and, and you'll understand when I, in my youth, you know, I, I started teaching when I was 19 years old. Uh, if that, if that gives you how long I've been doing this for. Um, but in my youth, in my twenties, I was, you know, a lot of, a lot of what you do when you teach is you go, okay, what are word pictures, um, that, that can really, you know, connect people to this concept so they'll remember it. And so it makes sense. And so I was talking about firewalls as, as one of the topics. And in my, in my ignorance as, as a young teacher, um, I, I compared firewalls to a lot of the battles that people have fought. And I literally were, was naming battles. I'm like, it's like a massacre. And like, and, and you know, <laughs> I'm giving you like, this is the office, right? Where it's like it is an extreme example, but I was dumb. I like people, people in there were like, 
uh okay yeah we got it we got it that makes sense um and later on people came up and said that was that was really offensive you know like i can't why would you do something like that? i'm and i was like i don't know like but but you have to sense the seriousness and 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 realize and if, oh man what a world we live in right people get offended at everything nowadays now i was radically offensive back in 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 the day uh making that comparison but but this is the tough part is is you we live in a world where everything's offensive to everybody because it just is i don't know i don't know why but but that's Nonetheless, that's where it's like you need to have a sense about you of who's in the room. What is the seriousness of the situation? What are the personalities? And, and, and choose tact. <laughs> that would be a whole video in itself of, of like, you know, how do you, how do you sense that? You know, you, you see the words I'm using as we delve into the soft skills world. And that is, that's, a, that's a hard thing to do. That's a hard thing to do. So... Um, I'll, I'll stop right there because uh, I know there's there's a bunch of uh, bunch of questions. So, uh, top tip says Jake: make a terrible cup of coffee on your first day. You'll never be asked to make one again. Yes, true. Uh, Stephen, thank you. Uh, so happy to run into this. Good, good, good. Okay, great. Uh, Michael, Michael Scott. I gotta look up My, My, Michael Scott from the Office. It, it, I, I, yeah. Um, so, uh, let's see. Hamaza, uh, probably a little little off topic, but but uh, stunning for the Encore exam. I'm posting a video on my LinkedIn explaining the Encore topic, but I'm worried that it will that it will make things worse in terms of finding a job. Ah, maybe that's not off topic. That's actually a great topic. Um, I talked I talked about in one of the previous ones building your own resume that's real rather than a paper resume. You know, like you know, going on LinkedIn, making videos. Um, don't worry about making mistakes. First off, when you're making a video on LinkedIn, know that it's easy to delete it. So let's say you're talking about, let's go with OSPF again, because it's an encore topic, right? Um, and, and you're like, oh, you know, you, you should use one area for everything all the time. First off, know that there's gonna be a bunch of people because everybody in the social media world feels it's their prerogative to correct you. That's what they do. People live to just sit on social media and tell people how wrong they are. So if you post a video on LinkedIn um, and people are like, you're wrong, you know, first off, you got to vet that and, and, and say, are, are they? But I mean, there's nothing that, to, that keeps you from either keeping it up there and saying, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I, 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 I was off um, because that employers respect that. But also delete it. We record it, throw it back up there, be like, hey, this is a corrected video because good grief, we all learn, right? You know, like that, that, that's also know that employers know that, that ever like you're going to make mistakes and that's, that's okay. Um, <laughs> I love it, Rob. Just because you're offended doesn't make you right. Uh, that, that Rob, there is so much truth to that. Um, uh, with, uh, uh, today's world people, people feel like because I'm emotional about this, my emotion makes me correct uh, because it's how I feel. Now, okay, okay, actually, there's, there's, let me, let me uh, say this, which I don't know, I don't know if this relates to the topic at all. Please know that how people feel is how they feel. There's no right or wrong to it. If I feel like there's no gravity and you're like, dude, you're walking right now. I'm like, I don't care. It's how I feel. And, and th that's true. There is no right or wrong to how you feel. Feelings aren't right or wrong. Facts are. Now, someone might be like, well, you're not floating away. So I guess that means there's gravity. I might be like, oh. And how I feel starts to change, right? Um, how I feel becomes, uh, becomes one of those, like, but, but, Oh, if, if somebody would have told me, like, I, <laughs> this would have helped my marriage so much more early on. Um, just saying, you know what? Just accept people's feelings. If they're offended, let them be offended. Um, and it, like, you know, because what, what happens is you say something, somebody's offended or they're hurt or they're sad or they're happy or whatever the case is. And we begin directing our energy at correcting their feelings. You can't help how you feel. It's, it's just... It just happens. Now you could control it. You could like, uh, you know, smoosh it down. You could, but, but the, but the fact is 
you have to, and, and this is hard in a lot of meetings. I've been in a lot of meetings where people are screaming, somebody's crying over there. And I'm like, what the, <laughs> I'm like, you're wrong. Like I started attacking people because, because of their feelings, right? Rather than, and, and it happens where, where the focus gets changed to feelings. And I, and I, if uh, I, anyway, I don't, I don't mean to go way off on the deep end on that one comment, but, but, uh, but, but the truth is how somebody feels is how they feel. And we have to be able to separate that and be like, Hey, I understand that you're feeling sad. Um, don't go to the next half of, but you shouldn't, right? Er, it, uh, man, I'm so glad I thought of that. That's, that's what we do. You shouldn't feel sad. You're like, but I do feel sad. Like, like that's, it's how, or you shouldn't feel happy right now. Well, I, I don't know why I'm, I'm, I feel happy. How you feel doesn't matter. It doesn't make something, <laughs> that's, that's a, you shouldn't say that either, but it doesn't make, it doesn't change the facts. It's just how you feel. And I, in, in my, in my perspective, much of the chaos in this world has be, been, been, has resulted from people accepting their feelings as fact, like you can't, you can't change my feelings. This is how I feel. Um, thus it's fact. And I'm going, ah, yeah. like how you feel. It's just a different category of thing, uh, from fact. So, so man, whew, did it. Rob, thanks. That's uh that's a, that's a great, that's a great little point. Um, let's see, let's see. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Okay. I'm, I'm, uh, I, 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 I told myself this morning, I'm like, I give up. I can't make 15 minute videos. But uh, but we're 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 about done. So scroll 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 scroll. Sorry, when I when I I have to literally scroll back through all of the uh, all of the comments. So I, I think I think uh, <laughs> I think on this uh, the number one comment is we should all go watch The Office. And uh, and I think I think maybe you're right because The Office you could probably learn it, The Office is hilarious, but you could probably learn if you can get past the surface. A lot of uh, a lot of deep rooted truth from the office. But anyway, great talking with you guys this morning. Hope this has been helpful. Um, I'll see you. Oh, oh, next week. Um, I'm going to change the topic. Um, uh, we are hiring at at uh, at my company Via. Um, we're going to be hiring some people, and uh, one of one of the folks I work with had this brilliant idea uh, to to say. Let's make a video on what we look for in an employee, um, because I think that will help screen a lot of candidates. Uh, and I'm hoping a lot of you can can grab like, oh, okay, if this is what uh, Via looks for, that's 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 the name of the the, the MSP. Um, if this is what you know, maybe that's maybe maybe it's me. Maybe it's a culture fit, or maybe you know. So so I'm planning to do that this next week. Um, that should be a lot of fun. So. Talk to you then. <laughs> I'm probably gonna have I'm probably gonna have little note cards that literally fan to the to the to the floor as I'm talking. So uh, great. I'll see you next week. Thanks, guys.